no need to fight For the battle is not yours The battle is the Lord's So you can see that bad things they don't come from God. Because my Bible tells me in James chapter 1 verse 22 every good gift every perfect gift they come from above. From the Father of all lights. They come from above. So when you see sickness when you see poverty when you see failure in your education, if you see things that you don't that don't make sense to you, just know that the enemy has done it. Because my Bible has proved it. Good things come from above. There's nothing evil comes from God. There's nothing evil comes from God. There's nothing evil comes from God. Amen. 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 Verse 29. But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. So what, what, what God was saying, Jesus was saying, leave the wheat, leave the tailor, to grow together. Sometimes we want to solve our problems in shortcuts. We don't want to wait on God. We try to look for our own way. Because you're seeing it is long, you're not getting married. So you're trying to get a boyfriend who's not in the will of God to satisfy your flesh. Not knowing that the product, the product of that relationship it will be a tailor. This is what happened to Abraham. In chapter 15 of Genesis. My Bible tells me. God promised Abraham. That he will be a great man. He will be a father of all nations. So the man waited. He wasn't seeing the promises of God coming to pass. This man what he didn't understand. That is only God who cannot lie. What God says about you in his word it, it will come to pass. Everything that is written here it is for your own benefit. This is your manual. This is your manual. This is your manual. Everything written here, it is for your own good. So use the word of God. Use it. It will produce results. My Bible tells me in Proverbs chapter 4, when you read from verse 21, it says. Solomon speaking to his son. Solomon, he said, my son, pay attention to my saying. Pay attention to my saying. Pay attention to my saying. To my saying. Can you project it for me, please? Proverbs. Chapter 4. Yeah. Don't let them Start from verse 19, please. Verse 19. 20. Go to 20. 20. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear. 
to my saying. 21, please. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Don't let them depart from your eyes. He's telling him, don't let the word of God depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Jesus. Keep the word of God in the midst of your heart. Verse 22 is going to give you the reason as to why you have to keep the word of God. For they are alive to those who find them. The word of God is life to those who find them. It means not every person find them. There are specific people that can find the word of God. Oh God. For they are life to those. Look at the English. It didn't say to all. But to those. Meaning some. Some. Who find them? Are you finding the word of God? Are you finding the word of God? Because the Bible said they are alive. To those who find them. And health. Jesus. Health. Health. To all fresh. Meaning. The word of God. Is your medicine. Medicine, 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 Anything spiritual. It is the word of God. It is the word of God. It is the word of God. Paracetamol. Paracetamol. Panadol. Panadol. Aspirin. Aspirin. All these other physical medicines. They can't cure something you're suffering spiritually. So as you apply physical medicine to your health, so likewise Use the word of God in your situations because it is life. It is health. But it works when you keep it in your heart. That's why I love the word of God. I don't cram scriptures. Because if I cram scriptures, they will not work for me. But I study. I study. I study. I study. To, to, to Timothy. Paul, he said, study. Study the word of God so that you can be approved by God. Any person who doesn't know the word of God, you're not approved by God. I study. And I teach it to my soul. And I, I apply it in my situation. Then I teach it to the people of God. Do you know what Jesus spoke to his disciples? He said the words that I speak unto you. They are life and spirit. Hey! your neighbor you need a word you need a word of God 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 
Amen. 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 Matthew 13 verse 30. Matayo 13 My God, I'm so, I'm so excited. It says, let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, not everything that you have to fix it quickly. Sometimes you see things you don't understand. You need to seek the face of God. Don't try to do shortcut in things you do. I've seen sometimes when we are on highway or when we are driving when you, when you, when you confront traffic jams sometimes pastor will look for some <laughs> shortcuts. Other so that we can dodge the traffic jam. But when we use these shortcuts sometimes, <laughs> we end up on that road when it is dead end. When you've ended up at dead end, when the road cannot let okay. you to go, where you have to go. Because we are trying. Because we are trying to do shortcuts. Now God is saying, because this servant of this man, he was giving advice. He was saying to his master, let me upload this weed from the weeks. His master said no. He said, leave it alone. There is time for harvest. So that means that you and me, some of the things that you don't understand in your life, there is time. There is visitation time from God. God will see you through. Don't try to make your own means. Abraham, that's what he did. Abraham, in Genesis chapter 15, when you read from verse 1, Abraham is saying to God, he said, God, look, you've not given me an heir. So this Eliezer, the man who was a servant, he said, he's my heir. So he was trying to make God's business short. He was trying to make his thoughts, adding it up thinking that is the will of God. But God said, no! Eliezer is not your child. That is not your heir. He is not your heir. So don't try to fix things quickly. Because God will tell you, that is not my will. That is not my will. Don't be quick to get married because you think other people are getting married. You end up in a dish. You end up in a pit. Wait for God. Because my Bible tells me seek God first. And all these things wife Business, business, cars, mamotoka, wealth, bugaga, and riches will be added unto you when you seek God first. The Bible doesn't tell you first seek a woman, seek a wife. It says, seek the kingdom of God first. <laughs> Then other things will be added unto you. So it's God of addition. When you seek Him, you live a life of addition. Ah. Ah. 
Life of addition. Satan subtracts. God adds. That is the difference between the two. Hallelujah. 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 Don't try to do shortcuts in your journey. Because you will cause problems to yourself. Paul said to the church of Romans. Chapter 8. Verse 28. Verse 28. He said. Oh my God. And we know. That all things, all things, meaning the bad and the good, bad and the good, they work together. My God, there is a mixing up together of two different events. There is a mixture of two different events. Bad and good. The Bible tells me Bible that bad and good they work together. They work together for good to those who love God. Ask your neighbor, do you love God? Do you love God? Only people who love God things work together for good for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Situations you don't understand they work together for you. Because you love God. You're not married now. You're still seeking for a wife. You're still seeking for a husband. You're looking for visa to go to foreign countries. You're looking for children. God is saying, Don't worry. If you love me, it will work together. It will work it for you. Because you love me. It will work for you. Because you love me. It will work for you. Because you love me. It will work for you. Because you love me. My God, my God. My God. Can I encourage someone tonight? First Samuel. Samuel Chisoka. Chapter 30. Chapter 30. When you read from verse 1, my Bible tells me that David and his men they came to Ziklag. When they came to Ziklag, that the Amalekites. They burned the city of Ziglag. And they took their wives. And they took their daughters. They took their sons. They took them captives. My God. Then verse 4. My God, verse 4. Verse, go, verse 4. The Bible tells me Bible that David and the people Bible. who were with him, Bible. they lifted up their voices Bible. and cried. Bible. They cried. Bible. They took everything that they had. Bible. The Amalekites invaded them and they burned the whole city. They took all their wives, their daughters, their sons. The Bible tells me David and his people they cried. They cried. They cried. Until when they don't have energy to cry no more. Do you know this is what we are facing right now? 
We have things that make us to cry. I don't know what you're going through tonight. I don't know what is your problem. But every one of you, you have a problem. There is something that makes you to cry. There is something that makes you to go on your knees. To say to God, I'm tired. I'm tired of this situation. I'm tired of being single. I'm tired of being in poverty. I'm tired of this sickness. I'm tired of having misrepresentation. I'm tired of being rejected. I'm tired no one accept me. When I talk, people, they don't listen to me. I'm tired people, they're accusing me. I'm tired my ministry is not growing. I'm tired. God, why is it that all these things, they're happening to me? All of us, we are tired. Pastor David, you have your own problem. I have my own problem as well. Pastor Dan, you have Pastor your own Dan, problem. Pastor Dan, you have your John, you have your own problem. Even me, I have my own. I have that thing that makes me to go on the knees. To cry to God. To say I'm tired of this situation. This is what happened to David. David cried. Until when he reached a point. When he can't cry no more. But the verse 6 of the same chapter. Verse 6 of the same chapter. Now my Bible tells me. Now David was greatly distressed. Oh my God. Do you know what we are going through? It can make you to be deep, deep, distressed. Do you know that? The man was distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him. Because the souls of all the people were grieved. Those people in the city were grieved. Because they lost their families. The city was burned. They didn't have food. They didn't have something to drink. Because everything was destroyed. So they were grieved. They were unhappy. For what has happened to them. The Bible tells me. That every man for his sons and his daughters because their daughters were taken captive their sons were taken captive now look where the difference is now the Bible tells me but David he encouraged himself in the Lord he encouraged himself he encouraged himself in the Lord. He didn't encourage himself in his wealth. He didn't encourage himself in his fame. He didn't encourage himself in the government. He didn't encourage himself because he was great. But the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. God has sent me to say to you, regardless of what you're going through, still looking for wife, looking for husband, encourage yourself in the Lord. Right now you are blocked. Right now you don't have money. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Things are not working for you. Encourage yourself in the Lord. No one is accepting you. Encourage yourself in the Lord. You are rejected. Encourage yourself in the Lord. You are still in sickness. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Today you are not driving a car. Encourage yourself in the Lord. You don't have money for business. Encourage yourself in the Lord. 
You failed in your education. You carried yourself in the road. You are divorced today. You carried yourself in the road. Your business, you're making losses. You carried yourself in the road. Oh my God, we need God. That means everyone needs God. Everyone needs Jesus. You need Jesus. No one can solve your problem. It is only Jesus. 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 You need God. People of God, don't be de don't don't deceive yourself. You don't need a man. You need God. You need God. David did not get encouraged in his wife. He did not encourage himself because of his wealth. But the Bible tells me he encouraged himself in the Lord. So it doesn't matter what you're going through, my sisters and brothers. Encourage yourself in the Lord. You know why you have to encourage yourself in the Lord? Because my Bible tells me in Psalms, chapter 30, verse 5, Weeping may endure for the for a night. Ah, ah, weeping may endure for a night. Ah, weeping may endure for a night. So your night can be two weeks. Your night can be one year. Your night can be two days. My night can be ten days. Your night can be ten years. Your night can be twenty years. Your night can be twelve years. But it doesn't matter. My Bible tells me the same verse. But joy comes in the morning. Meaning there is a there is a season of rejoicing. You're not going to end up weeping. You're not going to end up mourning. It is just for a short time. There is a time for rejoicing. Your morning is coming. 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 There is a morning coming on my way. There is a morning coming for you. There is a morning. That's why my Bible tells me that these things that you're going through, that you're suffering, they are temporarily they are temporarily there is no situation which is permanent. There is no situation that is permanent. That's why I don't underlook on people. Because I don't know what Pastor Dan is going to be tomorrow. I don't know what you're going to be tomorrow. Don't write off men when they are struggling. Because their situation it doesn't define their future. So don't look at me now. And you conclude on me. Because there is that season of mourning prepared for me by God. Hallelujah! 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 That means every one of you can make it in life. No one has your destiny. Don't be deceived. Your father doesn't have your destiny. 
Which doctors they don't have your destiny? Your parents they don't have your destiny. Pastor Victor doesn't have your destiny. Pastor Victor, see, I not destiny you. But on the God. Katonda yeka. On the God. Katonda yeka. On the God. Oyo katonda. On the God. Katonda yeka. 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 That's why he speaks in Psalms 23. When you read from verse 5, he says, He prepares a table in the presence of your enemies. God knows how to prepare a table in the midst of your enemies. There is a table of your marriage. There is a table of your finances. There is a table of your miracle. There is a table of your husband. There is a table of your wealth. There is a table of your children. There is a table of your anointing. There is a table of favor and acceptance. There is a table of God's glory. There is a table of healing. There is a table of ministry. There is a table of getting visas to go abroad. It's only God who makes that table. God who makes sure that your enemies, they are present. And he, and he prepares and he a table for you. In the midst of your critics, in the midst of your hypocrites, that's how God wants to work. So God is blessing you in the midst of those who are saying that you will not make it in life. Your enemies God is blessing you in the midst of recession. Recession when the government become back. Government in that's what he did to Isaac. In Genesis, in Genesis 26. When you read verse 1. Isaac. When famine was in the country. Isaac wanted to go to Egypt. God told him. Don't go. Stay here. In this land of famine. I'm going to bless you. In this land of famine. In the same chapter the Bible tells me. That this man grow. Rich. And wealth. And wealth. And even his enemies envied him. So my prayer tonight, your enemy, they will envy you because of what God is going to do to you. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. oh God, oh my God, Everyone on your feet, please. It is time. God is doing a party for you. There is a table going to be laid before you. Before you. Before you. Before you. A miracle is going to happen. <laughs> hmm. In your situation, in your situation, God is visiting you. When your enemies they are still looking, that's why we need to thank God for our enemies. Because God will leave them so that they can be envious of what God has done for you. Sometimes I, we, we don't have to pray for animals to die. We want them to be alive so that they can see the glory of God on our lives. Thank 
Moses. That that same God. Who did it for someone else? That same God. Can do it for you. If God did it. For David. And Isaac. Isaac. The same God can do it for you. Because it's not respectant of people. That is the kind of God we serve. Full of love. His love is agape. Agape means agape. unconditional love. When God loves you, He loves you regardless of what you're doing. Why He loves you with unconditional love? Because He knows that you with your works you can't praise him so you just look at Jesus what he did for you and he has no choice he loves you because of his son that's what we call grace grace means undeserved favor. Things that you did not do but they are granted unto you because of one man that Jesus. So I'm telling you tonight God loves us all. Sinner or unsinner. God still loves you. Because Jesus paid that price for you. That's why he wants you to join those who are already saved. Because my Bible tells me that he has no pressure. To see a sinner dying in their sins. Because he knows that he, will, he paid everything that you needed to be saved. So that means we are qualifying for blessings tonight. So we need to cry out to God. God, you know what I'm going through. You don't know, you know exactly what I've lost in life. This is what makes me to cry. Come. Rescue me, Lord. Help me in my situation. Speak what you want, what you're going through. You have your own problem. Tell God that visit me in this situation. Because you are the God who cannot tell lies. You said in Psalms that you prepare a table before me in the midst of my enemies. So ask God in the midst of my enemies in the midst of this trouble I'm going through. I need a table of a miracle. Let us cry to God. Cry to God, child. Cry to God. 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 Oh, yes, Lord. I believe you have been blessed by the word. Order more copies of this message and other messages. 